Meet the Experts is an interview series where you will hear the experts from the tech world share their stories, ideas, and how they envision the future. They will share tips on how students can enter, survive and thrive in the industry and eventually reach the top. In today's episode of Meet the Experts, we have someone who is as a technologist, educationist, life coach, and entrepreneur and is the CEO of Promital Group. Hello everyone, welcome to our first edition, first ever edition of Meet the Expert series. In this series, our experts will share their experience, technology and education in general. Our experts will interact with you by giving career advice. We'll be bringing in guests from all over the globe, from a wide spectrum of industries to give their views on emerging technologies and career opportunities in this fast growing world. Today we have Mr. Evans Tashi Manson with us. He's a technologist educationist, life coach, and an entrepreneur. He is currently the CEO of Promidel Group and serves as board chairman of Bam Petroleum in North America. Mr. Mentin has in-depth experience in enterprise systems and solutions spanning two decades and across multiple industry sectors, including the oil and gas, finance, healthcare, public sector, retail and manufacturing, and many more. It is great to have someone so great as yourself with us here today. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, I appreciate it. So we'll just go uh, straight to the interview. So you've been the CEO of Promidel Group. Can you tell us what this company is? Okay, so Promidel Group is um, it's a group of um, companies uh, with um, several unique projects. We have products development, it's, it's real estate in the United States and then you know in West Africa. And then we also do have facilitation of uh, crude oil services, um, working with oil service companies like um, Slumberjay, Halliburton, you know, Department of Defense, and then the like. Uh, we're headquartered here in uh, Houston, Texas, in the United States, uh, but we do have uh, offices um, in Europe and in Africa. Right. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So being part of so many great organizations and starting something of your own, finding your footing was not an easy task, I suppose. That is absolutely correct. So what kind of challenges did you have to face during your journey and how did you overcome, overcome them? Well, um, it, it is always a daunting task um, to um, start, you know, or even manage uh, an industry or a company. When you start, obviously you start from, you know, working somewhere, bringing in that level of expertise. Uh, but then you are now in an environment where you have to manage people, um, expectations, timelines, and the ever-changing working environment. Um, obviously, these are, um, you know, very uh, interesting areas that presents its own challenges. Um, and I think that Ultimately, you, you would have to, you know, set expectations, um, you know, creating clear communication channels always works. Um, adopting necessary technologies uh, that is needed uh, to aid, you know, in synergies between teams that are from various aspects of the globe um, comes in really very handy. Um, and, you know, that actually helps to seamlessly coordinate between, uh, you know, multiple time zones and, um, you know, uh, people and places, you know, and it's, it's an ever moving target. So you're always constantly learning um, and adapting and ultimately using technology to solve a lot of the problems going. Oh, wow. That's inspirational. 
So over the years, technology has evolved greatly. What difference do you see regarding technology now and maybe 10 years ago? And how important is technology to us now? I'm sure you, um, you see a lot of these changes, you know, um, today. I mean, technology has come a, a really long way. Um, it's, it's made great strides. Um, it's been very steady, very progressive, and has evolved, you know, in, in so many ways that almost every aspect of our lives is dependent on technology, right? Um, you know, our smart, our phones are even smarter these days. Um, our homes are even more smarter. You can tell the lights when to go on and then when to go off. Uh, you know, our vehicles have become, you know, not only faster, but very skilled in a way where some vehicles are absolutely autonomous, you know, these days. Um, when you look at these, it, it obviously tells you that technology is not just here, but technology has come to stay. It has come a long way. It has a very long way to go. Now, when we bring this into the business space, we used to have, um, you know, instances where companies are on premise. And when I say on premise, they have their computers and their servers right in one specific location. And especially in that part of the region in Africa where, you know, you, you can have your service in one place and then the next day everything gets burned down. It's, it becomes a challenge. We, we have made a lot of, um, um, you know, success from the area of software as, as a service, um, having cloud-based offerings that have taken center stage, you know, uh, these days. Um, and obviously this is very different than uh, on-premise, which as I said earlier on was very widely used um, before. Um, I, I believe this has um, fostered growth, you know, in the ever needing um, challenge to integrate and streamline processes across, uh, you know, systems, partnerships, and, you know, networks, you know, for that matter. So it's, we can, we can have an entire day talking about what technology has done, uh, but it is, it is, it is great, you know, to see these coming in. Yeah, absolutely correct. Um, so as technology is advancing, do you think online learning is better than going to a physical campus? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we do have a more integrated globe, um, a, a, a working environment that has positively affected, you know, economies of scale. And these are the results of hard working people with the right skill set. You know, um, online learning has very, very unique advantages. Um, and it does have unique opportunities in the sense that you do not have to deal with the challenges that come with barriers and borders and having to travel you're having to deal with a fraction of the cost as you, you know, learn um, and, you know, study in the, in the comfort of your, of your home. I believe, I believe it is actually more focused. It's a more focused, um, self-paced um, learning that also gives you a global opportunity. So you could be in any part of the world and, and learn um, a technology and, and be able to, you know, leverage that in places like the United States or the United Kingdom or anywhere else. You don't have to get up. Um, a, a sign of, of this is what happened about two years ago in this, in this um, times of COVID. 
where most people were forced to have to stay home and then work against um, the traditional uh, mindset uh, of you know having to go into the office to work. Now we realize that we can be more effective, um, and that very same you know sentiments can be can be said of you know online ed education and and how it presents opportunities and and solves you know problems ultimately. So yes, uh, I think it is very very unique um, in that sense. Okay, you've worked on business intelligence data analytics and big data. Can you tell us a little bit about it and how important emerging technologies are? Okay. Um, so we can talk about business intelligence. Uh, business intelligence is essentially systems, applications, processes, and the ability to be able to store data in a, an architected way where data can be retrieved and be utilized um, across the business, right? So for example, you're a company, you're gonna have an HR department that deals with you know, payroll. You are going to have um, you know, sales and distribution that obviously deals with you know customers and and then sales. You have purchasing department. Um, you know there are so many areas. You know in logistics um, and uh, even in terms of you know the actual manufacturing process. Uh, all these data will have to be stored in a way where you can um, leverage it at some point. And so business intelligence gives you that ability, even though it's a very wide scope, it is mostly leveraged in, in businesses where you know, it pretty much gives you insight into your company. And we do have what we call data analytics. It actually comes hand in hand, but this is where you have a unique set of tools um, to be able to plug into your data that you have designed in a way. And, and with the connection of the two, you are able to do what we call slice and dice, where it's ultimately just uh, bringing in unique sets of data that answers specific questions. And so you can present the data in a graphical form, you know, or in a, a visual representation that does not require you having to go through hundreds and hundreds of, um, you know, lines of Excel to sort of understand. But by just simply looking at it, you know, the way that it is designed, you, you can quickly make uh, decisions based on the insight that has been presented, you know, in front of you. So it is uh, very widely used um, in a lot of companies, um, you know, both huge and small companies, because it really helps in streamlining processes, it helps in making uh, the right decisions. So those are, those are, you know, um, great. My favorite aspect is when we talk about big data. Uh, okay. Big data, you know, is pretty much uh, technology behind having to store petabytes of data, massive data that um, necessitates new technology beyond what a computer CPU, uh, you know, can offer, you know, um, we have what we call the three Vs. You're having to deal with volume. You take a company like Walmart, uh, it does over 2 million transactions in an hour. What are you gonna do with that kind of data? You know, you, you have a company that does um, headphones and, um, you know, jogging exercise. I think it's called Jawbone. And as an example, they collect about 60 years of records every day, you know, uh, with the, when you pair it with the Bluetooth and you're jogging and you're moving and you're going, you know, the number of steps, your heartbeat, your pulse, all of that stuff. 
So data is always growing. We are always tweeting. We are always chatting. We are always, you know, talking so many different things are happening. And these are all what we call structured data, right? And so uh, big data is one of those um, technologies that really addresses a lot of this, where it, it interfaces uh, or works with structured data together with unstructured data to give you desired results. So you have velocity um, as well, uh, which deals with how fast, you know, we're getting data. How fast are you getting your news feeds? Uh, news, news feeds can be very, very, very critical when you are trading stocks, for example. You know, what just happened to the CEO? How quickly are you getting that? This actually helps in a lot of big trading algorithms that have been used. And big data has actually been leveraged about two thirds, you know, within that, um, uh, you know, namespace. And so we already seeing it. It's, it's very widely uh, being used now to, um, solve a lot of complex you know um, issues around technology we also do have variety we cannot talk about big data without talking about variety because when we talk about variety we're talking about volumes uh, well, we talked about volumes but we're really talking about uh versatility in terms of you know where is the data coming from we have some coming from sensors some coming from tweets uh, chats and so many other areas. You know, this actually helps us to really measure, uh, you know, sensitive, um, you know, data, uh, and that obviously goes back into checking what a consumer is thinking before they buy. If you marry business data to the unstructured data, right? What what is the sentiments of, um, uh, you know? of a consumer or what is the sentiments of an employee being online um, and what are they tweeting? What are they saying about the product? What are they saying about the company? Companies are very interested in that now, you know? And so there's gotta be a way to be able to um, really deal with these huge amount of data that may necessarily not be able to work in one aspect where you're dealing with the CPUs or a particular computer. But in this case, we have massive computers, what we call nodes, that are all interconnected from a networking standpoint, right? And then ultimately, you leverage data analytics again to bring you whatever desired results that you want. Because in this case, you have stored the data and you have deployed a set of um, uh, tools that facilitate how fast it can naturally come out, you know, deal with the volume as uh, we talked about, and then also the variety of information. You know, I think that um, with, with this, you are going to see constantly growing um, use from analytics that we talked about. We also step it up and talk about predictive analytics, where data will be able to help us predict what is gonna happen. Then, Ultimately, we can even have a, a federal agenda where we call prescriptive analytics, right? So, you know, you, you, if you can predict, ultimately you can prescribe and you're prescribing uh, and, and solving a problem today for the future. That's quite an expository. Um, so to wrap this amazing section, is there any career advice you'd like to give to our students? So once you're a student, this is a very passionate area for me because um, I have trained uh, so many people, you know, across the globe, um, over on YouTube, and then also in classes where people came into, you know, to take classes, you know, with me, I've been a life coach. Uh, and what I always tell people is when you set up your mind to do something, you can conquer and achieve anything that you want to. We do have such a wide spectrum of courses and 
your ability to follow trends and make the right choices, the decision to pick up a unique course and follow it through is very key. It should not be always about what you want to do or what your parents would want you to do, but use data. Again, when you ask questions, you know, how much salary is it being, you know, given? Um, where can I get jobs? Can I only get a job just being local to my country to, you know, to do it? And if you can answer these questions so that you become uh, more um, commercial, you know, and more useful to an entire globe, then it makes it, uh, you know, very palatable, you know, for you to be able to, you know, do so. Yes. So, um, you know, select the right desired, you know, courses uh, based on demand. Um, focus is, is a very critical aspect. So once you have selected, you have to stay true to what you want to do. Um, focus, someone would say is F-O-C-U-S, find one cause until successful. So you have to stay on that true course until you actually become successful. And that is what focus is. Dream big, dream, dream big. Uh, ultimately, um, your dreams, someone would say, is, is not what you experience at night when you are asleep, but it's rather what keeps you up at night, you know, so that you are constantly thinking about um, your future and the choices that you are going to make. So obviously dream big. And my last advice is, I always tell my students, be diligent. Be diligent wherever you are, whether it is in the classroom or you're working for somebody. Be diligent. Diligence is not loyalty. You do not need to be loyal. Loyalty is to your family, but diligence is to your work. And I say that because when you're diligent, you're working hard where you are. And so you actually make an impact in that organization and you gain knowledge and insight in your acquired skills. But you have to move to the next level and to the next level. And you may have to go to so many places. So there is no need being loyal, being stuck in one place, but be diligent because that diligence will always spearhead you, take you to the next level from one project to the other. And you're gonna do great. Wow. Thank you so much for the advice. I'm sure the students will incorporate them. Thank you for joining us today. We are extremely honored for you to be part of our first ever Meet the Experts. We are coming up with more interesting conversations with guests from around the globe. Stay tuned and thank you. Thank you for having me, appreciate it.